Hi, I'm Gina. I'm an Egyptologist and the curator of the Garstang Museum at the University of Liverpool. And I'm here to talk about some of the Egyptology collections at Townley Hall. So first of all, let's look at this pot. This is a really, really beautiful object from one of the earliest periods of Egyptian history. I say history, it's actually prehistory. This is from before the development of writing anywhere in the world. So this part is about five and a half thousand years old. What's really striking about this object is the depictions of boats and water. So these are painted onto the pot before they're fired. And you find a lot of these D ware vessels, we call them, D for decorated ware, actually include images of water, include images of boats. So there's another boat on this side with little cabins. And the reason that this motif is so common is because water and boat travel was so important to ancient Egypt. The Nile is the most important geographical feature in Egypt. And in fact, it was the use of the Nile, of particularly river transport, that allowed Egypt to come together as a country because you had people being able to travel further, extend their political and cultural um, reach. And really, that brought the nation together in time for the pharaohs to rule over the land. So this pot here might not be the most exciting um, looking object. Um, you have pots in Egypt that are you know, beautifully decorated, incredibly fine walls, highly polished. And these are objects of art in themselves and very valuable, which is why they were placed in tombs. But with this object, we'd be fairly certain that it was the contents of the pot that was what was really valuable. Now, it's really difficult to say for sure what was in this pot because there are no traces that remain to this day. And in fact, they would have been um, washed by archaeologists when they excavated them. So it, we can't even do an analysis of the object. But one interesting thing we can say about this object is we know exactly where it came from in Egypt and we know exactly who excavated it. So this little number here, this number 26, in Garst John Garstang's handwriting, tells me that this was excavated by Garstang, who was a professor of archaeology at Liverpool, and he excavated it from the site of Beni Hassan. And more than that, we know that he excavated it from tomb 26 at the site of Beni Hassan. And it's really rare to know exactly where an object that is, you know, around 4,000 years old actually came from. Something else that is really interesting about this object is just the way it's formed, and you can almost see the handprints, the finger movements that a potter has made 4,000 years ago when creating this object because it's not been smoothed. And I think that really gives you kind of a connection to someone living at that time in a way that maybe the beautiful pots that were just simply placed in a tomb and never used just don't do. So this object here is probably one of my favourites in the collection. It really doesn't look like much. It's a piece of wood. It's got some hieroglyphs on it, the ancient Egyptian writing. Um, it also has on the back a very old label. And the label says, found in the tomb of Ramses VI with his oval. Now Ramses VI was a king of the New Kingdom. When I looked at this object, I found the oval, which is a cartouche, which is the way you would write a king's name, a pharaoh's name in Egypt. And I realized that the name doesn't say Ramses VI, it's the name of Ramses V. The odd situation we have with Ramses VI's tomb was it actually originally belonged to Ramses V, but he cleared it out and he used it instead. So this object, likely found in the tomb of Ramses VI, but bearing the name of Ramses V, may be one of the only pieces of royal funerary furniture from the reign of Ramses V to survive. And this makes this little unassuming piece of wood so incredibly rare. This adorable little statue is um, a figurine depicting a monkey playing a harp, um, possibly a baboon. In ancient Egypt, uh, monkeys were actually kept as pets. Uh, you see them depicted many times on tomb walls, doing all kinds of activities from um, collecting things at a market to helping um, the tomb owner with their hairdressing, um, and even 
playing things like the harp. Um, unfortunately, it's not clear where this particular object comes from, but many of them were found um, in the city of Armana in the New Kingdom. I think it's fairly unlikely that this is a representation of reality. I think no matter how well you train a monkey, it's not necessarily going to make the nicest um, tune on a harp. But it may just be that this was considered um, a cute little trinket to have around, a fun little figurine, the kind that we might put in our own homes today. So this painted piece of wood um, is actually a fragment of a shabti box. So this is a box that would be placed in a tomb to contain shabtis. And shabtis were magical figurines. So they were placed in a tomb in order to do work for their owner. In Egyptian beliefs about the afterlife, um, when you got to the underworld, the field of reeds, you owed work to the god of the underworld, Osiris, who is depicted here on this um, piece. And at first, the Egyptians would have had a single Shabti in their tomb. And that Shabti would actually pretend to be you. So when Osiris comes along and goes, you, come Ozi, come and work in the field, the Shabti goes, oh, I'm come Ozi, I'll, I'll go and work in the field. But as time went on, um, ideas developed. Um, eventually, more and more of these figurines were placed in the tombs. Um, leading to a case where you have 365 worker Shabtis, one for every day of the year. And then, because the Egyptians were very practical people and didn't believe that 365 workers could sit around and not be, you know, chatting rather than doing their work, they decided to include one overseer shabti with a whip per 10 worker shabtis. So this means you have a lot of shabtis in your tomb, and hence the need for an object like this, a box to keep them all. And this is a particularly um, beautifully painted example. In fact, you can see a depiction of the owner of the Shabti box here. And he's wearing um, a leopard skin. You can actually see the head of the leopard. And that indicates to us that he was actually a priest. And he's shown making offerings to Osiris, the lord of the underworld. And you can see this and many other fascinating things at Townley Hall.